Meanwhile, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, the ICPC, says it has drawn up guidelines for the management of relief funds by the Presidential Tax Force, PTF, on COVID-19 to prevent corruption. Spokesperson of the Commission, Mrs. Rashidat Okodua, disclosed this in a statement on Wednesday in Abuja. Okodua said the move was in pursuant of the corruption prevention mandate of the ICPC as enshrined in Section 6, Subsection B to D of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act of 2000. She explained that the guidelines were also in furtherance of an independent COVID-19 font monitoring team recently set up by the Commission. The committee is charged with monitoring of the disbursement of utilization of the font, donations and other receipts mobilized towards combating the outbreak of the coronavirus in the country. We're now joined via Zoom by the Director of Public Enlightenment and Spokesperson of the ICPC, Mrs. Rashidat Okodua. Good afternoon, Mrs. Rashidat, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. How are you doing this afternoon, ma'am? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Why is this matter arising at this time? Were there no standard rules for prevention of abuse of this font in place before now? Well, um... It's the emergency nature of the COVID-19 response, the emergency nature of it, the scope of it, and uh, the need to do a lot of things in a big hurry. That is what made it um, kind of um, necessary for ICPC to have an intervention. Because usually you know that when things are being done in a hurry, the, we, we, there's a tendency for people to be blindsided by the exigencies of the situation and they may not take necessary precautions as regards uh, following the rules and regulations. So ICPC issued an advisory in uh, March, actually um, in, uh, at the end of March, and I think March 31, issued an advisory to all those who are handling the response that they should not allow the uh, emergency nature uh, blindside them to the issues around rules and regulations. And uh, Afterwards, at the request of the Presidential Task Force itself, ICPC issued um, the guidelines. Oh, before even ICPC issued the guidelines, we set up, um, we set up uh, an independent monitoring team that we already set up in-house to monitor what is happening around the response. So thereafter, the, um, the PTF requested ICPC for guidelines so that at least people will be properly, properly guided in what they have to do. Well, you asked whether um, uh, rules have not been in place before. Yes, there have been rules in place. There are still rules, public service rules, financial regulations, the ICPC law itself, public procurement act, and all other such rules that guide accountability and transparency in handling government funds. But um, ICPC has a mandate, a corruption prevention mandate in its law that allows its room to step in and warn people uh, 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 to step in and make sure that things are done properly. So the rules are in place. From our experience, from our experience in the past 20 years, we found that it's better to prevent corruption than for it to happen and then you're going after the culprits. Because what happens is this. By the time you run after culprits, you would have lost the value of the money, even when you uh, um, recover any assets. You would have lost the value of the money. You would have lost the social benefit that the money would have brought to the people at the material time. So doing corruption prevention and ensure that the people get value for money and they get all the benefit that government intends for the social development program or uh, economic program that the government has in mind. So in spite of the laws existing, ICPC by its mandate has to do corruption prevention. That's why we have stepped in at this time. I'm also um, concerned for, for these guidelines coming out at this point in time. Uh, is it for a result? What, what's informing it? Is there, is there any whistle blowing anywhere that could suggest a possible misappropriation of this fonts? No, definitely not. Okay. Uh, there is no whistle blowing involved here. As I said earlier, we have a mandate. Let me, let me be more precise. The law that sets up ICPC, that's the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act 2000, at Section 6, subjects on B, C, and D. That is where the corruption prevention mandate is, whereby ICP is supposed to study the systems of government bodies and then you know, uh, direct a review of the corruption prone systems that we find. But beyond studying the systems, Section 6C and 6D mandates ICPC to advise any agency or head of agency to instruct or advise any agency or head of agency 
on ways by which corruption can be uh, minimized in the operations or corruption can be totally eliminated. So it's in furtherance of that mandate that ICPC decided to step in in this instance. You know, because we don't have to wait until things go wrong and start chasing after people. It's better, like I said before, to prevent uh, uh, things from happening, bad things from happening, than to start doing uh, corrections after it had happened. I want to start an example. I know that there's a social intervention program under the office of the vice president. What, what's obtained by way of guidelines for that social intervention program under the vice president? Oh, it's a good thing I even bring that up. Yes. The NSI, that's National Social Investment Office. ICPC has had uh, uh, or had a collaboration with that office, with that office when it was under the office of the vice president. And that collaboration is still ongoing now that the function of uh, the program has moved to the Ministry of the Humanitarian Affairs and uh, and uh, social development and disaster management. The collaboration is in this sense. ICPC monitors what they do with the uh, consumer cash transfer, with the end power program, with the school feeding program. We monitor to see if there are any infractions that take place in the process, and then we swing into action. So that collaboration is still ongoing with the ministry as we speak. And in fact, just recently, uh, I think uh, in the last uh, three weeks or thereabouts, We've exchanged correspondence with the minister on certain issues surrounding the CCT. So there is something in place with the NSIO office. But what did this raise issues of distrust, even in the case of um, a tax force set up by the president himself? Some might even argue that this might come across as an, a usurp usurpation of the presidential endorsement. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely not. I will not agree. It does not um, usurp the presidential endorsement. It doesn't raise the issue of distrust. You know, I said earlier that we have a mandate by law to do the needful regarding preventing corruption. And beyond that, beyond what I've just said about the law, Mr. President himself, at the inauguration of the ICPC board in February 2019, February last year, and also at the, um, at the National Summit on Diminishing Corruption, at those two public events, Mr. President himself charged ICPC publicly to intensify its corruption prevention intervention in MDAs, in government bodies and agencies. So we're just, um, we're just implementing or complying with Mr. Mr. President's directive and we're executing our mandate. So there is no issue of distrust and there is no issue of usurping the President's endorsement. Would you say this is a precedent? It's not a precedent. Okay. You know, I said earlier that the corruption prevention mandate of ICPC at section 6A, sorry, sections B, C, and D okay. of its law empowers it to do corruption prevention. Section 6B, I didn't speak to that earlier. 6B says ICPC should do systems review of organizations, government bodies, review their processes, their procedures, and where we find that there are some that encourage corruption, we are to direct. That's the word, the word the law uses to direct and supervise the review of those systems or those procedures. So we have had several um, system study and what we call corruption risk assessment intervention in many MDAs. ICPC had intervened in the court sector at one time. We had intervened uh, uh, with the MDG uh, related MDAs of water, education and health. We had intervened at Mutara, Mohammed Airport and the uh, Abuja International Airport, looking at the processes and raising flags of corruption there. We have intervened even on the e-governance, uh, e-government uh, uh, systems of government. So it's not a precedent at all. It's just in line with what we have been doing. All right, Mr. Sokodua, in, in the light of all of these, are we likely to expect such intervention in the future? And will the ICPC focus on prevent, uh, preventive, uh, preventative guidelines for all tax forces or committees? Well, definitely, we should expect to see more of ICPC intervention relating to corruption prevention and all other aspects of his mandate, the enforcement aspect and the public engagement uh, aspect. But to speak specifically to the issue of all future committees or task force, as you said, that will not necessarily be so, because it depends on the uh, scope of what the task force has to do, and possibly also on the amount of funds involved. We cannot possibly intervene in every task force or, 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 or committee that is set up. But where the stakes are pretty high, then you would expect to see ICPC there. Are there any concerns that this might slow down the process 
um, and entangle us in a bureaucracy at a time when we need rapid action to assist the poor and the needy? Uh, definitely not. Okay. It, there is no bureaucracy. In this instance, for example, in this COVID-19 response instance, ICPC's team, the monitoring team that we set up, is not part of the everyday processes of the, of the presidential task force and all those who have to do things around the response. No. We are just on the sidelines observing what is going on. And if at any point in time, members of the response team require guidelines, I mean, or, or guidance rather, guidance regarding certain issues, they may raise them with us and we would oblige them with our responses. But as per the day to day running, we don't interfere. Definitely after the or if we notice anything is going wrong, of course, we will raise the flag to the appropriate quarters without necessarily disrupting processes. We are well aware of the need to get assistance to Nigerians as quickly as possible because this is an emergency, a global emergency that requires prompt, immediate, urgent action. So there's no way we are, we are interfering with the process. Not at all. We are not interfering. Mrs. Rashida Okodua, it's been such an enlightening time having you join us on News of the Hour. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Let me use the opportunity to thank all those at the front line of the COVID-19 response. The ICBC would like to thank the PTF, the uh, medical personnel, and all other persons who are at the front line. We thank you. Our nation cannot thank you enough. God bless you and God protect you in all that you have to do. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for the job you do to you.